The Brandon Peters Show may contain explicit language and detailed plot points. For more information on the show, stay tuned to the end of the episode. And now, here's Brandon. Welcome back to the Old Space Show. I'm Brandon, and this is my co-capitan, Yim. Hi, also known as Jim, and it's not Old Spice. It's Old Space. <laughs> yes, Make yes. Sure you get it right. Thanks, thanks to difference. the praise for those Old Spice people who thought uh, their new flavor, or sorry, fragrance sounded really interesting last week, but I, I assure you the Tabor, it is not. Um <laughs> Uh, this installment of Old Space Show continues our episode-by-episode episode travelogue through the second season of Space 1999999 Space 1999, where the moon is knocked out of orbit, wandering through outer space, the population of its human-built colony, hoping to stumble upon a new home. Today, we are talking about the eighth episode, The Mark of Arcanon. A sensational fight below the moon's surface. An imprisoned man and his son. Who are they? How did they get there? How long have they been there? And why? Those questions will be answered by director Charles Crichton and writer hey. Blue Schwaz. Like, <laughs> like uh, uh, um, <clears throat> Once Upon a Time in, the, in Hollywood. That's Schwaz. Schwaz be with you. Oh. Uh, and a special guest this episode, John Standing. Not sitting, but standing. Uh, when, when when you order uh, Alec Guinness from Wish. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> That's all, oh. all I can think of with this guy, because he just like was just like bargain basement Alec. He had that same kind of yeah. slightly eaten, eaten wow. delivery. And it was very much reminding me of Alec Guinness. Oh, my gosh. That, I, you said that, and bam, like instantly I was with you on that same level. Um the so Lou Schwaz, the writer, he is a TV writer primarily and some film sex comedies and musicals, uh, including the Carry On series, um, which is a popular British series. Uh, but none of his material I was looking has anything remotely like Space 1999 or science fiction. <laughs> this was just like a, a favor. Uh, a one off. Something. A one off for I'm going to dabble in some space stuff. And here we are, uh, Mr. Standing. He has a gigantic career. Uh, he's been in The Elephant Man, V for the Vendetta, The Eagle Has Landed, The Avengers, the TV one we always talk about, The Saint, Secret Agent, Midsummer Murders, of course, Heart to Heart, Hunter. He played the voice of Mr. Brown in Paddington Bear. He's been nice. in Erie, Indiana. Uh, Murder, she wrote. L.A. Law. NY, I know I'm just going on and on and on, but NYPD Blue. Uh, but yeah. one thing of interest, in the OOs and up to the early teens, he played M in a series of James Bond radio plays that included From Russia oh. with Love, On Her Majesty's Secret Service, Diamonds Are Forever, Moonraker, Thunderball, Live and Let Die, and The Man with the Golden Gun. I find it very fascinating that in Game of Thrones he played John Aaron's corpse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Okay, now, now we want you to really, really emote on this, okay? Oh gosh. So. Yeah. But so a real big career, and now I am going to be seeking uh out the James Bond radio plays of this. Um because I'm very interested. Hmm. Were those put out by the BBC or uh, some probably something like that? I didn't have time to really look that up because I'm a lazy oh. podcaster this week, uh, and I was just like, "Ooh, I, I need to check those out." And I love the thing I love about British is like they are still into like old school radio dramas and plays. Like there are even Space 1999 audio. There dramas is that yes are produced in Britain. Yes, big finish. We love stories. Okay, do um. 
Troy Brownfield, or not Troy Brownfield, but uh, Russell McGee, who's been on here before. He uh, he is an audio engineer at Big Finish, where he works on. Nice uh, for them. Yes, um, good group over there. Um, so this episode, we open with the return of Alan. Yeah, Carter. and boy, is he back ever in this episode. He is all over it, man. There are apparently caverns under Alpha. He's down there singing a song in a cave. Yes. A time. I love it. I love he was singing. It's, I was so good. It's it's Alan and crew member we've never seen before. Andy uh, Bluey Johnson. He has the nickname right. Bluey. Yeah. Right. We mention him later too, because he gets his ass whooped. <laughs> uh. Oh Bluey. Oh Bluey. Uh. Uh, they're, they're searching for dilanide crystals in the cave that's below the surface of the moon. It's just there, folks. Um, they just they discover they're the flavor. They're the flavor crystals from Old Folgers Coffee. It's, yes. You know, that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, they discover something unusual in the rock and investigate with their spotlight, burn it through things. And yeah, can we, wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. Allow us to rewind just a second. The the instrument they use to do this. It's literally a telescope. Yeah. But at one end, there they put a spotlight. <laughs> yes, they did. So the laser, I'm using quote air quotes because I know this is only audio. <laughs> it's a spotlight <laughs> at the end of a telescope. Yeah, it is. There is nothing it laser about it. Telescope. No, nothing at all. And I also wanted to mention that I remember a few episodes back where they had their giant signs that just said danger. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. We have another giant sign sighting in this episode. It's a giant sign. It doesn't change. It says pressure normal. It's huge. It's like huge. it's like like a like a small billboard on the side of one of those cave walls. And it doesn't what I'm wondering, I'm sorry, a little sidebar here. I'm looking at the sign, it says pressure normal. There's no way of the letters or words to change to anything else. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it yeah. can't switch to pressure low or pressure high. It just says pressure normal. There. That's all it says. Uh, how useful is that? Pressure, pressure, regular. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. It's like, <laughs> well, it's it's there. It's it's always going to be what it is. It's just and crazy. So it's not. I just loved it. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so what's the sign? How's the sign going to be useful to us? Well, uh, you know, the pressure. Well, what if the pressure fluctuates? Uh, oh. uh, I didn't think of that. <laughs> uh, Derek, Derek. Oh, yeah. Back to the drawing board, guys. Come on. <laughs> Uh, so they, they unearth something from there and it's a glass chamber with two bodies in there and the, there's an adult and a child and the adult guy, he looks like, like he's a cross or a child of King Tut and Lopan from <laughs> Big Trouble in Little China. Like I said, froze, frozen Aztec space Burger King. Yes. Yeah. It's it's his wild. face. His face is the Burger King. It's got that really unnatural hair that doesn't move ever, right? And then he's got those big Aztec type like tri- or uh, rectangular pads for a vest, right? So that's what I went with. And he's like, like in there. And then his son has like a reverse mohawk, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is never a good look. I'm sorry. No, no, it's 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 like horseshoe baldness kind of looking thing. And the, the so in the 1960s, there was like this. I didn't live, I was not born then and stuff, but from what I can gather from media and stuff and, and history, is there was Ancient a fad. Tests. There was an Egyptian fad in the 1960s um, with, you know, I believe they were taking like King Tut's tomb around or something. Like there was some traveling exhibit stuff. There's a lot of. Yeah interested in Egyptian stuff. It was over by this, but this feels like a hangover of that. Like, right. Shouldn't be there. Like this, nobody does this anymore, but, but he's more dressed like he's an extra from Squanto, a warrior's tale, <laughs> you know, but he's got the big Zardoz boots. Like they yeah. both have these big red Zardoz boots. And it's just like, dude, are you going to go do electrical work or <laughs> are you right? sacrificing to, to quit the coddle early later tonight? I mean, I, what's going on here? Make up your mind. So uh, when we, oh, and like, we forgot to mention that this guy, he all he does is open his eyes and it knocks Alan out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alan gets like, like, 
That's like, like the first commercial break. It's like, mm-hmm. oh no, Alan's been knocked out by Burger King opening his eyes. Yeah, but it's a relief. He's not dead. So that's good. Because he, uh, Helena. Spoiler she, for later in the episode, with the, there's another <laughs> almost death for him. They want to scare the shit out of us here. Uh, so Helena comes to treat Alan and Tony and others come to investigate the bodies in the chamber and close by to the way, me- hey, By the way, I don't know if you noticed. Tony had billing over Alan. Oh, did he? I didn't notice. Credits, because they, you know, in the opening credits. Oh, no. It's, uh, um, it just mentions uh, 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 Bain and uh, Landau and Shell, right? And yep. then it says also starring. And first one was Tony. And then was Nick Tate, who plays Alan. He That's got billing sh- over Alan. Yeah. Yeah. It's a- I just wanted to mention yeah. that because you know we we've been following the the plight of Alan and and the, uh, the you know them trying to sell us on Tony this whole time. I just wanted to mention that. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so the examination of the bodies revealed that they are alive, but in some sort of stasis. <laughs> you know that's how we pronounce stasis. In, uh, in it, well, but, yeah, well, I wanted to ask you something really quick. When they find them in the ice. They have that weird rune, kind of yeah. like the uh, Mason's symbol. Mm-hmm. Um, Tony says this stuff about, oh, the people of Chrome True, uh, Chrome Two. That's a sign of danger. Blah blah blah. Was that from another episode? Did I miss that? Yeah, I, d- I don't. I don't remember that. No, I, I I was like I was wondering that. Like what? Okay, I figured it was just something they threw in so that it could immediately. Warn us by throwing mm-hmm. something in. I I don't I, I didn't know. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I missed anything because that's what he says. It says Chrome too, and I'm like, all right. First of all, is that like a new Google browser? I mean, <laughs> and second of all, um, did I miss that from another episode? Because he says, well, they use it as a sign of danger. Blah blah blah. And then my next thought was, okay, they're frozen in ice, they're covered in a force field, and they're clearly marked for the sign of danger. Let's break them out. Right. <laughs> well, my thing was, too, like, wait, how did they get here? Like, they had to have been there before the moon left orbit from Earth. It's not like they were added. So I was like, what? Well, how did this happen? We, we get that answered. But um, the control unit for the chamber is uncovered, uh, but the resulting cave-in threatens the lives of the Alphans as well as the two aliens. And there's an explosion that deactivates the protective energy field around the chamber. The two aliens are rescued, revived, and brought back to Alpha to recuperate. Where we find that out... Looks like, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to say, I was where gonna we say when they come out of the ice, it kind of it kind of looks like Spinal Tap. I've yeah. seen the Spinal Tap where they come out of the cocoons. It was very similar. I was like, whoa, we're at a heavy metal show. All right. Oh, party. Um... We find out that uh, Maya and Koenig are gone. Uh, at the, they're at the, the blue quadrant circle. So, <laughs> so we know this is going to be a Helena quadrant. story. Helena and the gang. <coughs> the blue quadrant. The blue quadrant. So, um, there, yeah, there's a meteor shower. and they're in the, they're Oh, at. no, they say, that, they say they're in the eye of a meteor storm. Yeah. Because that's how that works. But yeah, I'm I, sorry. I didn't yeah. mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Oh, so, uh. So there's this other doctor guy in this episode and I don't, he hasn't been in one before. Has he, his name's Raul. No, 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 he's, no, no, he's, he's, yeah, he's, he's totally replacing new. the guy who is normally in the, the med bay. Okay. And, and he seems yeah, like me. he's just there to, to spout off medical stuff and do doctor things since Helena spoilers gets captured later. Seems to be his only purpose. Hey, what do you know? John and Maya through a video screen get uh, brought up on the situation and they tell him about the alien visitors and the aliens arrive. The two aliens arrive and they come to the command center. Um, the one gets when he gets up from the, the bed, he puts bubble wrap around his head to cover his symbol. And then the, the kid That's wants right. him to kill him. But he's like, no, I can't. So. That that's what they do before they get in there, and there's like a weird score in this episode that doesn't gonna say, anything. I was like, going to say it almost seemed like the jazz bass is what woke him up. Yeah, like he's laying there, and all of a sudden this jazz bass solo breaks. I was like, Boom. I'm like, oh my god, he's been woken up by Charles Mingus. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
so uh, the alien named Pask explains, if I did my pronouncing that right, I can't, Pask, oh, yeah. uh, explains that the Arcanon system break down sedatives more quickly than man does. And uh, Maya recognizes the name Arcanon as the god or planet of peace just before they lose signals. So I feel like they added the video stuff just because like no one, we need someone who knows what this is and Maya's not from here. So she right. might like, right. I was like, really? That's allow me to enter, allow me to sprinkle some exposition. Goodbye. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. And this meteor shower, it looks like a blizzard and it's popcorn balls is what it looked like to me. It pop, looked like, yeah, uh, pop, yeah. And I gotta say, I, Plot their ambition for trying to pull this off, though it looks like toys. Um, but they, they go for it. They don't hold back on the the, the meteor no. shower. So, well, you know the the we we you know remarked a few times about how they're trying to mm -hmm. up the special effects this season. Yeah, this is definitely you know over you know what we had last season. I mean, it's still not great. Obviously, like you said, it looks like a bunch of toys, and it does. Yeah. But you know, it looked like uh, popcorn balls uh, with silver spray paint. True, true. So Pask introduced himself and his son, Etric. Uh, he explains that they were on a mission to teach other races that evil could be replaced by good, but met with total failure when it came to Earth, saying his crew was infected with the human's madness. And led by his wife, Lara, they mutinied against the only two unaffected, Etric and himself, and they were uh -huh. imprisoned in a stasis chamber left behind. And Etric faints and is brought back to the medical center um, when Alan goes to check on him, uh, Pask picks up a pair of scissors and raises them behind him, but Etric intercedes, saving him without his knowledge. Uh, mm -hmm. there's a, there's a funny line here, um, that Pask says or something, uh, when he talks about him not fully being with it, he's like, my equilibrium was not fully restored when I stood up. <laughs> Cause that's the way people talk. That is, well, he's not, he's not. He's not, he's not right kidding. So, yeah, yeah. He's Pask, right. Pask is super bad at being evasive. Yeah. Like, this whole time, he's like, oh, you know, it's like, oh, I'm obviously hiding something, but I'm not hiding anything, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, this whole, whole episode. And then this is also, isn't this about where Alan takes a shine to the kid? Yeah, yeah. They play football oh at the hall. And, it's and, like and, the uh, freaking courtship of Eddie's father with this episode with this kid. <laughs> And Alan, Alan just oh, basically, yeah. all right, let's go for a cheeseburger, mate. I'm going to give you a piggyback ride. He does call him mate. And then he, uh, son, this is the football. Australia mm -hmm. beat Great Britain with this one. He's got this, like, old football. It's like, so you're telling me American football became the football to all the other countries in Space 1999's future? Oh. Kind of funny. And then there's a guy when they're in the hall and they're playing football. This other guy comes up to talk to them, and it, he is like so dubbed. It's not even funny. I'm like, really? Uh, I wanted to ask you, is guy couldn't dubbed? get like two? I don't. I couldn't tell, but this guy that came out with oh, two yeah, lines. Definitely... Like you couldn't even get yeah. your two lines out. That's how bad you were. Wow. I mean, the, the, like... they left the oh, one sorry. girl go. I mean, they left that one girl with the c controls that replaced Sandra yeah. go. I mean, like, and they're gonna right. for this guy up. I feel like some of the, a lot of the, I feel, I feel like some of those kids' lines were dubbed. Yeah, they probably, I, I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. The voice sounded like, it almost sounded like uh, an adult who sounded, sounds like a child. I'm trying to think oh, of a, a, yeah. a good yeah, uh, yeah. cartoon voice that sound, uh, to describe that with, but I can't right now. I know what you're saying, though. Uh, so, Raul and Hel Helena discover a virus in Pask's uh, sputum uh, when they compare it against. Uh, Etrix, uh, they find that it is dormant in the boy. The power unit and what was left of the stasis chamber have been brought in the tech lab into tech lab three. And this thing is like a colorful triangular tube thing with like polka dots on it. Like it's excuse, excuse me if you don't mind. Light bright making things with light. Light exactly. Bright, making things with light bright. It looked like a light bright with like a flip top. Yes. Uh, so. <laughs> Alan and Etric go there and find Tony trying to figure out how to operate the power unit. Etric says that Pask would know how, but when he arrives, he tells Tony that Etric's confidence in him is somewhat exaggerated. Tony asks if he could at least open it. Pask does, and they find a transceiver used to locate the Arcanon landing party. Helena calls and asks Tony to send Pask and Etric to the medical center. 
<laughs> it's just that, that little VCR thing is great. And again, it's just this guy who plays Pask is really bad at being evasive, mm-hmm. you know? It's like right. you know, the guy it's like the guy who passes you your poison. It's like, you know, would you like your <laughs> drink? You know, it's like, oh, right. I don't know anything about this law just because I was the commander. Oh, come on. Yeah. Uh, it's just, uh, it's just very, very yeah. evasive. Uh, well, they. And I don't know they, if he's trying to play it that way, or if it's just like that he's a bad actor, or a little of both. I think it's going to be a little of both. Probably a little of both. Uh, I love what. Uh, so, uh, the Arcanon guys leave to go to the medical bay, but they they uh, head for the uh, embarkation area, and Pass knocks out the pilot. Who I didn't get this from the episode, but notes say he was on standby to la- launch in case Koenig and Maya needed assistance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and. But, he yeah. gave him the two-handed Captain Kirk chop. He did. Right chop. in the back of the head. Judo chop! Uh, <laughs> and uh, before they can get in the uh, waiting eagle, a security guard finds them. The past is their loss, so he, he leads them back to the medical center. Um, I do love that in the middle of this, we had a scene that was literally, I called, Meanwhile, in the meteor shower! Which is ger- <laughs> just cut back to the same model shots and stuff, the meteor shower and Maya and uh, Koenig looking concerned as they pilot. Like it, it was just like right. randomly there. Was like someone, oh. someone sh- shakes the set of the Eagle cockpit. They look concerned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so on the way they pass tech lab three, where Alan discovers a recording on the power unit. Uh, Johnson sees them in the hall and calls <laughs> them to look at it. Pask attacks Johnson and Carter, then grabs Etrick and runs, which he claims he kills Carter. Yeah. But he That's another, it. right again, right before the commercial breaks. This is two now. Twice mm-hmm. that we that we get faked down on Alan's death. Um, right. And and it turns out he's okay. Also, as he's getting attacked, again, with the, the signage in this show just frigging kills me. There's a giant sign on the wall and a giant like staples red button that says alarm. Yes. Uh, <laughs> like for that, no reason. It's like all this, t- all this random tech crap, and in the middle of it's a giant sign that says "alarm" and a big red button. Right. And there's the uh, the kid goes. And he's like, when Carter goes, there, he's like, "You killed him. He was my friend." Yep. Then Looks they like got to commercial. Wrote line. Uh, so Tony uh, arrives, and well, okay, so. Tony arrives and calls Helena and tells her Pask assaulted Johnson and Carter. She grabs a medical kit and a stun gun and heads for Tech Lab 3 to assist. As she approaches, Pask grabs her and takes her weapon. Etrick runs into Alan, who has recovered, and Pask threatens to kill Helena if they do not clear a path to Eagle 3. And Tony complies. Yeah, but first he puts a gun to the kid's head. Right, yeah. First, he threatens to kill the kid, and then Pass calls his bluff. He's like, uh, okay, I'm not going to kill a kid. Right. Right. Uh, so so Pass calls Etrick over to him, but Etrick refuses. Pat, uh, well, that's why he threatens to kill him, but he can't. So he takes Helena to the waiting eagle while Alan leaves Etrick to calm down in the rec center. Tony deactivates the launch pad so the Pass can't <laughs> lift off. Pass contacts Tony and tells him he will trade Helena for Pass, but will kill her. If the launch pad is not no, reactivated for Etrick. Etrick, yeah. For Etric. Sorry. That's okay. Yeah. I know it's hard to keep all the aliens straight. Oh here. gosh, yeah. And, and let's not forget Arcanon sounds like some sort of substance abuse uh program, doesn't it? Right, it, it does. It does Arcanon. <laughs> Please get help. Call Arcanon. Call Arcanon. <laughs> and uh Helena tries to pass on a message to Raul, but pass cuts the transmission short. Raul thinks she wanted to get a sample of Etrick's blood to see if a serum could be developed. Tony asks Alan to get a sample and try to convince him. Oh to my go God, with that. the scene. Oh my God, yeah. I'm sorry. So Yo, he goes like... in to, to ask Etrick for blood, right? And mm-hmm. Etrick is holding a bird about to kill it because he's got that killing rune glowing on his forehead or whatever, right? So he's right. all sick. So he, he throws the bird, like, oh, no, I wasn't trying to kill this bird. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so oh, no, no I... I wasn't at all. And then. He literally he takes a steak knife off like a table. For some reason, there's all these knives sitting on the table in a recreation center. I don't know why. And he pulls out this big steak knife. And now they don't show it, but they, they intimate that he jabs it into his forehead. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. To give him a blood sample. <laughs> so to give him a blood sample, he jabs the forehead, himself in the forehead with a steak knife. Mm-hmm. Great kid show you got here. Okay, I'm sorry. Please continue. Oh, gosh. So, Retrick has uh, since become infected with the killing sickness. Mm. And he moves to attack Alan, but he can't do it. He takes the cut knife and cuts the mark from his head. And he offers the blood to Alan here. And our Arcanon ship signals Alpha to warn them of the danger they are in and ask permission to land. And uh, Tony agrees. Then is called to medical center where Etrick has been brought. Alan shows Tony the recording on the power unit brought yeah. at Etrick's request so that he can see Lyra's message, which tells the story of why Pask and Etrick were left in stasis on the moon, which, awaiting a think, cure. But all that exposition that Arcanon Kate Bush uh, brings out here in right. the recording is like stuff we already knew. Yeah. It's yeah. like, yes, obviously, they were the ones who had the killing virus. Obviously, you know, all this stuff. And it's like, nope, we need to spell this out for you here for at the end of the show, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm just like, what? Why? Uh, well, okay. It's, it's all the stuff they'd already figured out, you know? Which, Lyra, man, that hair. Whew. Right. It was like look, a big, look, look. poofy ball and then, like, braids coming down from it. Yeah, look up the Babushka music video by Kate Bush. That's, uh, that's, I think that's the one. She has hair like that. That's what it made me think of anyway. Gotcha. Uh, so it's patched through to Eagle, to Pask and Eagle 3. And after watching Lyra's emotional recounting, Pask wants to know where Etrick is. And Raul says he's dying because he's unavailable to replace the blood that he has lost. With nothing left to keep him on Alpha Pass, threatens to kill Helena if the launch pad is not reactivated. Helena convinces Pass to give Etrick a transfusion of his blood, treated with a serum. It works, saving Etrick and yeah, but not him of first, the killing sickness. Pask is at first at first Pask is a bit of an anti vaxxer. Because mm-hmm. someone's like, I can make this serum from your blood. And he's like, No, it won't work. I'm just gonna die here in this chair. <laughs> <laughs> what I love is, is the last privilege of killing sickness is to kill oneself. Yes. What the hell does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> gonna, I don't gonna get that like in like some sort of cursive tattooed on my arm or something. Um, no, that's okay. <laughs> uh, so, um, Morna arrives as Helena learns that Pask is not recovering. He asks Marna, a descendant of Lyra, to take Etric back to Arcanon, and she tells him he, she cannot because he has the sickness. Helena explains to how they cured him. Lyra informs her that no Arcanon can give that amount of blood to sur- and survive. Pask tells Helena it is the final privilege of the killing sickness to kill oneself, as I mentioned before. Etric asks for some time with Pask to hang and during this time when they're like leaving and stuff carter comes up to the kid he's like hey sorry your dad just died here's a football right he gives him a football and then Please. helena goes helena comes up and goes football it's an old earth symbol that means uh, i'm glad i met you like, yep. what you guys are really botching this goodbye here both of <laughs> you real bad plus i mean good biology you have there you can't make more blood for yourself if you lose any <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yes. What evolutionary step caused that to happen? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know I'm trying to impose sense on something senseless, but uh, no. It's... Nope. It is. It is insane. Uh, so, uh, uh, Koenig's back for the end here. Uh, John returns to oh, find. Oh, well, thanks, Koenig. I'm glad you <laughs> could help. Have a good time in the friggin' blue quadrant with your alien girlfriend. Yeah. It's like. <laughs> Sounds like I missed a whole lot of fun. So he returns to find Helena grieving about the death of Pask. I don't know if she's having tea or a whiskey, but uh, he tells her there's no way she could have known what would happen. Wow. How many of these ep- episodes ended like that? Like, oh, we had no idea that this would. Nope. Couldn't couldn't have figured out the, by the giant danger sign on the thing or <laughs> yeah. the force field or the fact they were frozen. Or, nope. Yep. Buried, buried under the moon. Right. 
maybe they were there for a reason. I don't know. Yeah. So, I mean, here we go. Another, like, I don't know. I feel like we've had this episode quite a few times on the show. Um, where it's like, well, I'm on Alpha, and now I'm oh, I'm some alien that has gotten my way onto Alpha. There's more of you than me, but somehow I commandeer everything here. Um, I have a partner. I don't know. It felt very done I'm, before on the show. I am often played by a Shakespearean and or British TV actor. Right. I'm often dressed in outlandish clothing and or makeup. <laughs> yes. But yeah. but yeah, exactly. You're, this is you know, the kind of episode we've seen quite a few of them. Granted, when you have the situation the show's in, I guess it's going to come around a lot. You know, like, what, what can we do here? We can either have it, you know, base, you know, someone takes base under siege. We go to another planet. Like, well, yeah. this is easy for, easier for them because they don't have to make any new sets. This is all on Moon Base Alpha. Walk um, over yeah. next door and see if they have any costumes to make aliens out of and you don't have to make right. them. And then they have to, uh, you know, I think probably the biggest expenditure in this whole episode, other than the talent, was probably the special effects. Right. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. Okay. Well, uh, that'll do it for another Moon Buggy Adventure. Uh, in the meantime, Jim, where can people find you? Well, uh, on a weekly basis, you can enjoy my musings along with uh, professional comedian Donnie Salvo and Daryl Taylor at Nothing's On. Uh, every week we cover a uh, week's worth of uh, edu- uh, edutainment. No, entertainment and <laughs> movie and yes, all the edutainment you need. Film and movie uh, and TV news, entertainment news, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we cover it every week. We're doing a lot of TV reviews right now because of all the new TV uh, shows coming out, the new seasons hitting. Uh, uh, so definitely check that out. Nothing's on. That's at the Taylor Network of podcast.com. And at HHWLOD.com, we are uh, covering The Walking Dead as we have since the very beginning of the very first episode of the very first show. Right now, we're covering Fear of the Walking Dead with uh, Lenny James and Keith Keith Carradine, and that has become a very good show. And then uh, Walking Dead World Beyond, which uh, we won't mention. But that's at HHWLOD.com. Check that out as we trundle toward the very uh, end of the, uh, the entire show of The Walking Dead. Hashtag friendship touchdown. And I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Brandon4KUHD, written work at YSOBlue.com. There's more from the Brandon Peters show this week, including Jim doing a music video what? episode on Friday. No. Yeah. Again? Yep, forcing you to. Forcing. So, until then, Alpha out. Thank you for listening. The Brandon Peters show is a Creative Zombie Studios production, produced by Brad Shoemaker and Brandon Peters. Written and edited by Brandon Peters. Announcer vocals by Jessica Alsman. Theme song by Metavari. Web design and show art by Brad Shoemaker with Brandon Peters. All music and clips featured in the episode are property of their respective studios and no infringement is intended. Additional information on this and other episodes at brandonpetersshow.com. For any inquiries, press opportunities, or sponsorship, contact mail at brandonpetershow.com. The show is available on Apple Music, Spotify, or anywhere podcasts are found. <laughs>